Okay. You are staring at the butt of a 60-something pound dog. Or bigger. Anyway. Anal glands. Grab something to point with here. Anal glands in the normal animal have a duct that comes just inside the butt here and just inside the butt there at about the 5 and 7 o'clock position. Up inside the gland, inside the muscle over here, okay, on both sides, in between the, um, the levator ani, which goes from here to here, and the coccygeus muscle, which goes around here, in between those two muscles is a gland sitting right about here on both sides. So whenever the animal starts to wink, bench off the log, for lack of a better term, <laughs> A little bit of these glands, or the glandular juices, make its way under the stool. That actually gives the next dog that smells it a fingerprint smell that we'll be able to recognize this dog from. So in other words, without that, without the event of anal glands, what would happen is these guys would then again go and get to um, <clears throat> be able to know who exactly dropped that particular turd. Um, so anyway, with this in mind, what we've done is we went in and did these surgeries. I, uh, I'm not not a fan of these surgeries. Uh, I really don't even like doing them with skunks, but at least skunk's anatomy allows it a lot, a little easier and a little safer to do. So anyway, what's happened is we removed these once before and somehow germinal tissue can be left behind or some scar tissue. It can actually cause some chronic problems. So this right here was opened up and was a really, really big area about as big as my thumb that I had to go in there and scar out. And then I packed it with this iodine um, uh, impregnated uh, cloth or umbilical tape hopefully to get rid of and kill any leftover tissue that might be in there. Anyway, these things are chock full of side effects, chock full of complications. Anal sacculectomies are not my favorite surgery. Um, as a matter of fact, we're coming in today and we're just trying to fix this one since we tried it earlier. And uh, probably from now on, outside of skunks and exotic animal medicine, I am probably never going to do one of these again. Okay, so having bitched and complained, I'm out of here. That's one more time. Okay. You are staring at the butt of about a 60 to 80 pound dog. This guy's actually been in for previous anal sacculectomies. And as you can tell, the left side has actually become an issue. The normal anatomy of your anal glands in a dog are going to be at the 5 and 7 o'clock position. You have some ducts that go just inside the anus. And in between the coccygeus muscle and the levator ani muscle, there's a set of uh, a gland on each side, okay, called your anal sac. Basically, basically, your anal sac is either one, a defense mechanism, or two, it's used to uh, basically identify kind of like a fingerprint smell each individual that ends up expressing this onto their stool. So in other words, an animal without anal glands could actually drop and have some McDonald's french fries. Dog B would smell it and say, well, somebody had McDonald's french fries. But with the advent of anal glands being there, the next dog, Dog B, goes up and smells and goes, whoa, look, Fido had french fries and McDonald's french fries at that. So it's kind of a fingerprint smell. So in theory, dogs don't necessarily need them, but we surgeons don't necessarily want to take them out because there's so many complications. One, there is a nerve that runs these two muscles and all of this area here that can easily be nicked or injured or, or damaged in some form or fashion. There's also a vein and artery and, an, and as well as the nerve that goes to each one of these anal glands and those can be an issue. Um, one of my first sets of anal glands that we'd done years and years and years ago, about two decades ago, um, ended up getting an infection in here. And instead of the infection coming the back the, the easy way, it actually went forward and caused a peritonitis and that particular dog died. So this is one of my least favorite procedures because there's just no way to predict what's going to happen once you're done. So anyway, this is one of those ones that, was, uh, that we did a few weeks ago. This side seems to be doing fine. This guy actually had a small infection secondary. So what I had to do today was go in and where that small duct was coming out right there ab abnormally, okay, we had to completely remove that whole duct. I put a special chemical on the new methylene blue to stain all that tissue. And then I had to go in and remove all the blue. Um, that's now done, and the reason this looks so swollen here is because that pocket ended up being packed with about six or seven foot of this stuff right here. It's basically a cotton, cotton impregnated umbilical tape, and it's impregnated with a uh, um, tincture of iodine. So hopefully the tincture of iodine is meant to go in there and scarify and kill those cells that might still be producing anal gland juice as well as any infection that's in there. And over the next few days, they'll pull this out a little bit at a time and then cut off the excess. I'm going to recommend that he stay here at Socia for that whole process and then go home afterwards. All right, so that's what it looks like for now. Um, wish these guys luck. 
and I hope I never see this butt again, except his tail wagging. That's about it. Um, and we're out. Later.